These photographs could not be published 40 years ago, but now they document a painful chapter in history. Graham Bound ran the Falkland Islands newspaper when Argentina invaded. We were quite used to seeing Morris miners and Land Rovers, you know, trundling around. But these armoured personnel carriers were huge, even by the standards of armoured warfare. Mm -hmm. And they were just grinding their way across our roads. He carried on taking photos, even though his paper, Penguin News, had to stop publishing under Argentinian rule. They're now on display at the Chatham Historic Dockyard. They're so evocative for me that when I look at a few of them, I can smell them almost. The first news of the invasion came from the island's radio station. Just a minute. Did you, did you take the gun out of my back? But I'm not speaking with a gun in my back. A garrison of Royal Marines was vastly outnumbered. We were going to die, without a doubt. I was convinced of that, and so were they. They eventually laid down their weapons, but returned to fight when Britain sent a task force to retake the islands. It cost 255 British lives and more than 600 Argentinians. They've been remembered this weekend in a vigil in their home country. Three islanders also died, while dozens of locals played their part in resisting an invasion, which now draws comparisons with the war in Ukraine. Anywhere you look in the whole Ukraine story, you see parallels. That aggressive nationalism itself, it was the same in Argentina. That idea that we could expand into somebody else's territory. Certainly there are stories of conscripts who were very poorly equipped, very ill-trained. It was exactly the same in the Falklands. 74 days after invading, the Argentinian forces surrendered and Graham was pictured with hundreds of their abandoned weapons. Understandably, islanders prefer to commemorate their liberation rather than the day the Falklands were conquered. Ian Woods, ITV News.